Our next guest says that girls are getting plenty of attention, but is it the right kind? There's a tidal wave of products marketed toward girls, and it generates millions of dollars. Peggy Ornstein has been writing about this for many years. She's the author of Cinderella Ate My Daughter, and she joins us from Berkeley. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, Madeline. Hi. Well, boys and girls, they do play differently. And so what's wrong with toys that recognize that, toys for girls and toys for boys? Well, you know, what's really interesting is we've entered this hyper-gendered age of toys that didn't really exist, even um, kind of pre-feminism. And one thing to understand about kids is the way they develop. So little girls and little boys, they don't understand um, anatomy is destiny for most of us. They don't understand that sex, your, your genitalia, um, are linked to your sex, to male or femaleness. Um, what they think is the way that you dress. If you wear barrettes, that makes you a girl. If you wear um, overalls, that makes you a boy. And so that's called gender impermanence. And when kids are um, in that phase, they tend to gravitate toward the most extreme representation of whatever it is um, for their sex that the culture offers them. So when I was little, that meant baby dolls and baby carriages for little girls. Now it means, um, you know, spa parties and, and princess dresses. But the thing is, so kids that age are like the gender police, right? That's why you can't stuff your three-year-old girl into um, pants all of a sudden. Yeah. They're the gender police. But at the same time, it's when kids' brains are the most malleable. It's when they're laying down tracks for everything they do, when they walk, when they talk, when they fall, when they cry, everything they do is laying down tracks for their aptitudes and their attitudes in later lives. So when boys and girls play in these ghettos, they don't get the exposure to create the aptitudes and the attitudes. It's foreclosing things down the line. So can I give you an example? Sure. Um, there was a study that was done of 5,000 three-year-olds, and it found that three-year-old girls who have older brothers have better spatial skills than girls with older sisters or boys with older sisters. So there was something about the exposure to older boys or to maybe the toys that they got handed down that changed, changed their brains on a neurological level and changed actually what they were good at, what they were capable at, of. That's really interesting, and maybe that has to do with this next toy that I want to talk about, and that is is Legos, and Legos has mm -hmm. now received a fair amount of criticism for coming out with a version of its toys that particularly is designed for girls. And let's take a look at the ad for this new product. I just finished decorating my house. Time to chill with the girls. At the beauty shop, Emma is styled and ready to go. This is gonna be so much fun. There's the bet with Mia. See you soon. The newly built cafe is the coolest spot in Heart Lake City. Welcome to the world of Lego friends. Okay, Peggy, that is now a candidate for the worst toy of the year award because of its <laughs> gender stereotype. And, and what do you think about it? Well, you know, I think it's a, it's really interesting if you look back at old Lego ads, like from the 1980s, there's this wonderful ad with this little red-haired girl with her hair in braids, kind of, you know, half braided and half down, and she's holding this free-form Lego sculpture that she's made, and with this big smile, and holding it out, and the caption is, what it is, is beautiful. And that's yeah. what Lego used to look like. It was founded on principles of the, the, one, the guy who founded it in the I don't know what you call it, the Constitution, whatever their original founding document was, it says, a toy for a girl and a toy for a boy. It was supposed to be a toy for everybody. And then over the years, they realized that they could make a whole lot of money by making it hyper-stereotyped towards boys. And then they realized that they'd left out half the population. So rather than really try to figure out a way to reach girls that would broaden ideas, make it you know, a great toy, they just went to the easiest possible stereotypes. And not only that, but Lego, girl, Lego Friends line does not require very much building. I'm also wondering if Legos and other toy makers aren't also imprisoning boys in stereotypes, sure. stereotypical toys. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think they are, and and, and media too. There was just um, a, a new partnership with uh, NFL, and they're making um, a cartoon series uh, with boys who are superheroes who are saving the NFL because they want to hook boys into NFL um, fanship 
uh, starting, you know, at age four, five, six. So, yeah, boys have their own stuff, but, you know, my area was girls, and that's what I'm talking about. Right, right. Well, let's talk about a typical girl toy that's the Easy Bake Oven, or at least a toy that is marketed toward girls. There is an eighth grader in New Jersey who is saying, no, why don't we make this a gender-neutral toy? And she has this campaign, and take a look at this video that she made. I'm cooking cookies. You are? That sounds fun. So tell me, what do you want? What do you want for Christmas? I want a dinosaur easy bake oven. Why don't they have any boys in the easy bake oven commercial? Because because only girls play the and, and, and because I don't know how why they could put girls in the commercial. You think they should put boys, right? Yeah. Because boys like to cook too, right? Uh -huh. That was my little brother, my favorite chef in the world. He said it himself, girls are the only ones who are supposed to cook. Is this really the message we want to send to our youth? I just love that. She's great. And but I'm wondering, Peggy, here we are in 2012. Didn't we fight these battles yeah. a long time ago in the 1970s? Why are we refighting them? I know, right? I have to say, I really wanted an Easy Bake Oven. I wasn't allowed to have one. <laughs> and I also remember that when I was a kid, um, for Hanukkah, my brothers and I got cookbooks. And we would get that. They would give the present. My parents would give it to all three of us. I had two older brothers. And I remember having the Betty Crocker for Kids cookbook. And it had a boy and a girl on the cover. And I think you wouldn't see that so much today. I mean, the, the what what um, marketers know and have realized since about the mid 1980s is that the more you segment a group, the more you sell. So the more you segment girls and boys and make them different from each other, emphasizing differences or creating them where they don't exist, um, the more product you're going to sell. So that's you know it's kind of what it comes down to is what that girl said at the end of that clip, which is is that really how we want to raise our kids? Peggy Orenstein, thank you for coming in this evening. My pleasure.